Okay, let's do uh, part two. So we're going to upload the run we built earlier in part one and then uh, play that back through our simulator, which I'll show you in a second here, and uh, look at the results and how the profiler works. So first of all, we have this device here. Um, some of you may have seen it, trade shows it, a track, whatever. This is our simulator. We can take a uh, data run from a profiler, from a race pack, from other devices, and play that run back exactly like it happened, a thousand times a second to one RPM accuracy so that we can develop things here in the shop. So if we take this run that we, we've uh, created here, so we've got our, we've got our uh, target drive shaft that we'd like to run, okay? We've got our timing curve that we think will get us down a racetrack. We've got our ranges of tolerance above or below where we need to modify the timing to stay on track, to stay on target with our plot. And then we have our zones where we've done different amounts of timing and uh, advance and retard throughout that run to stay on target. So we take that, we go to control, we pick our COM port. Okay, it's, it's usually the bottom one in the list. So we do that. If you never change that plug uh, on the laptop or whatever, it'll never change. The, the profiler on that socket in your computer will always be the same. So we're going to upload that. Well, here we get our upload box. See, it's inherited the name here to here. And we can change that if we wanted. Um, I'm going to set it as test one. Click those buttons. You can click like this. Okay. And upload. So here goes all the data. This is our our zone settings, our parameters for uh, how we're triggering things, um, all the dots for the plots, all the timing curves, everything that we've set up. Now, hopefully, I don't embarrass myself here. I haven't, I haven't test run this on the stuff behind me. Um, here we have a uh, profiler set up. You can see it's. I don't know if you can tell in the video, the screen's out. It's uploading. All right, our upload's finished, and we close this. So now I'll run the simulator. I'll run that same run. So we want to arm this. And I don't know if you can hear that RPM in the background. So there's that run. And we go and download it. So notice your arrows here. We're up into the car or down out of the car. So then we're going to download. All we need is the run data. If we didn't have it already on the laptop in this file, say you're going to help a friend whose computer crashed, you can download the profile, you can download the base time, and you can download all the events and settings. And if you have a VPS, you can check that box and download your VPS. So we're going to download the run data for T1, and we download. So here comes the data. For what it's worth, when it's uploading and downloading, don't touch these windows, don't drag them, don't move them, don't click on them. It's an issue we're having with Windows, and it freezes up. If you leave them alone, you'll be good to go. Okay, so here's our data. So now what we have is based on our ranges and our settings. I'm going to turn these off so we can see. Everywhere <clears throat> that it's below the profile, it's adding timing. If it spikes above the profile, it's retarding timing, then back to adding. So to analyze that a little closer, let me click down there, zoom max, click here, zoom max. And you can see here we start out, um, we're way behind our dots, right? Um, this particular download is actually an older download that uh, was probably done on eight pulses per rev or four even, probably four. So right here, it's... It's not able to add any timing until it gets from the blue to the uh, pink or peach. If you go back to the previous video and look at our settings. So as soon as it's allowed to add, um, let me try to zoom in. So again, that's a right click and hold and drag. You can see right here, it says, ah, I'm behind. Add timing. So it adds in the timing we said it was allowed to add. As it starts approaching the target, let me zoom this back out. So we're adding, we're behind drive shift speed. We're adding, 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 adding. And as we start to approach our target, it starts moving from add to retard. 
Now to look at the speed and accuracy of this, and this is where we differ largely from uh, systems that may be built in your ignition or your EFI or whatever. You can even see right here. Oops, look up here. As it went a couple RPM above our target, it pulled less than a tenth of a degree. <laughs> you know, it's the precision is unbelievable. Um, here, if you look really closely, it's dropped below, so it should be adding timing. Zoom in here. It's adding timing. Okay, I can assure you, other systems out there will not do that. Um, so now we're we're adding and removing here. It spikes above, so it pulls timing, goes back in to add. It's below, so it's adding, 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 adding. Now you see here we get to this transition to this shift zone, or if you recall, we don't have any adds, so it drops from adding right to run in our curve as programmed. When it spikes above, it pulls timing. So from there, you can see it's doing it all the way through. Again, even uh, right here, we have a minute retard. At this zoom level, I can't see why. Let me zoom in. There's why. That tiny bit above, and then back down, it's, it's so precise. Um, we zoom in on this. You can see the shape of this timing change matches the shape of this overspeed. And it's just completely accurate, fast. Uh, like I say, well within one RPM. It's actually much finer than that. But we'll call it one RPM accuracy and uh, a thousand times a second that it's monitoring this. So, yeah, here you'll see we're riding on the dots. And we've got these little retards. No ads because it's not allowed. And we got these little retards. And there's why you have those little retards. Here's a here's a big hump. You know, that's the largest uh, retard we've got. So that gives you an idea of the speed and the accuracy of the profiler. So we can take this. Uh, oh, for example, let's do this. Let's go up here. And... Make our dots bigger. We'll take, uh, let's pick a dot right here where nothing's happening. We'll take this one dot. We'll move it down. Okay. Take that. Save and save often. Upload it. Re-upload. This takes a few seconds here. And I'll show you, one, it's going to respond there. Secondly, you'll see that our simulator does exactly the same thing every time. That's a tool we developed about 12 years ago. Again, not sounding too arrogant. I assure you we are the only ones that have this tool. Um, the commercially available stuff is just not designed for this kind of application with racing and uh, actually of RPM. So, you know, you're looking at stuff here that we've got uh, 12 different patents on. Uh, simulators, we have two patents on the way we measure RPM. So in these other Systems say they do just like Davis. Well, they're either not like Davis or they have some patent issues. So we've re uploaded. Let me run the simulator again. Run it again. And we'll go back up to our download. Uh, sure, we'll save the profile. Now we'll notice it's incremented from T1 to T2 by itself. Download that. Now these uh, these radial buttons here, this T2, if you look over here, you'll see the first one. I named it Shop T1, and then it tagged it with a T1 and the date that the simulator let go of the trans brake. So there's a new run just came in, and you'll note it's T2 right here. So... That, um, and here's our time and date of that. So, we uh, take a look at that run, and you will see, let me change the color of one of these, and the same down here, 
color red so the first thing you'll notice as far as their speed and accuracy let's turn off the profile and here's the simulator runs in the recording of the profile you see a slight difference here other than that those two runs are identical okay there's the red one there's none blue red it's dead on okay again it's a hell of a tool go down here to the timing we'll see the same thing there's the blue run there's the revenue underneath of it now that dot we drug is right here turn this on you'll see right here I've got this extra dot it made that extra correction the red run stayed flat through there this one pulled down and went back up so again the speed and accuracy is uh, off the hook so that's a big difference in profiler and uh, some of the other stuff out there and the general functionality of profiler you can see that your job now becomes not I've got to move timing to manage the wheel speed you're gonna flip-flop that a little bit I'm gonna give it a timing curve that should work but I'm gonna plot the wheel speed I want it to have and profiler is gonna modify that that um, timing curve to hit the target wheel speed so your primary function is plotting out the wheel speed not a timing curve you think is going to get you to a wheel speed most of my guys most of you racers all of you you know what wheel speed you need to run where on the track and then of course if you hit something unexpected slick spot bald spot get out of the groove whatever you've got something here in real time that's uh maintaining the wheel speed you need to be at regardless of uh uh what the track had to throw at you so doesn't mean you're always going to go down but it's a hell of a tool to put you down the track most of the times so that's it i think next we'll cover uh self-learning